Good day, learners. This is your accounting teacher, Sir AJ, and welcome back to my channel. For today, we will be discussing another financial accounting topic, and this is very important because this is one of the newer standards that were promulgated by the IASB. So for today, we will be discussing part one of financial instruments. That would be an introduction to PFRS 9. So if you are now ready to learn about PFRS 9, this video is for you. Good day again, learners. So tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, we will be discussing today financial instruments. But this video is just part one of a series of video tutorials about financial instruments. So in this video, we will be talking about the rationale and scope of PFRS 9. We will also discuss the nature of financial instruments and classification and measurement. So PFRS 9 is titled Financial Instruments. This is the standard that governs financial instruments and we will discuss in details in many videos what are the accounting for financial instruments. So first, we will discuss the scope of PFRS 9. IFRS 9 has been developed by the IASB to replace IAS 39. So this standard was completed in July 2014 by publishing a final standard which incorporates the final requirements of all three phases of the project. The three phases are as follows, classification and measurement, impairment, and hedge accounting. So the Philippines adopted the IFRS 9 and um, this is what we call the PFRS 9. Under the scope of PFRS 9, these are the examples of assets and liabilities that fall within that scope. Cash, trade receivables and payables, loans receivables and payables, certain loan commitments or bank borrowings, investments in shares in listed and unlisted companies, investments in convertible notes, derivative financial instruments. So if you take note, most of these are financial assets and financial liabilities. Later, we will discuss what is a financial asset and what is a financial liability. For the nature of financial instruments, a financial instrument is defined by PFRS 9 as any contract. Take note, contract. So, two parties should be involved in that contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. So there are two entities involved in this contract. For one entity, it will give rise to a financial asset and for another entity, it will give rise to a financial liability or an equity instrument. The following are not financial instruments. First, those that are settled through the receipt or delivery of goods or services because hindi financial asset or financial liability yung in exchange kapag merong involved na delivery of goods or services. And number two, tax assets and liabilities because yung mga tax assets and liabilities, they arise from legal requirements and not contractual. So take note na yung financial instrument is um, a part of a contract or it is born out of a contract. So what is a financial asset? A financial asset is any asset that is number one, cash. Number two, a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity. So, kaya siya asset kasi potentially favorable siya. It is also considered as financial asset if it is an equity instrument of another entity, meaning you invested in the equity instrument of another entity. For a financial liability naman, 
it is any, any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash. So, kanina sa asset, to receive cash, dito naman, to deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity. Take note, kaya hindi pwedeng maging financial instrument kapag may involved na delivery of goods or service kasi you don't deliver cash. Ang dinideliver mo or yung nare-receive mo ay goods or service. Sa financial instrument, pag asset, you receive cash or another financial asset. Pag liability, you deliver cash or another financial asset. Or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable to the entity. For equity instrument, it is defined as any contract that evidences a residual interest in the assets of an entity after deducting all of its liabilities. It's just a residual interest. So after knowing the definition of financial asset, liability, and equity instrument, we will have a practice problem on computing financial assets. Brody Company has the following assets on December 31, 2020. Petty cash fund, 10,000. Cash in bank, 40,000. Notes receivable, 130,000. Discount on notes receivable, 7,000. Loan receivable, 80,000. Loss allowance on loan receivable, 4,000. Advances to suppliers, 12,000. Prepaid income tax, 10,000. Prepaid assets, 4,000. Inventory, 380,000. Held for trading securities, 60,000. Investment in associate, 40,000. Deferred tax assets, 12,000. Sinking fund, 75,000. The question is, compute for the total amount of financial assets. So to compute, these are the financial assets. First, yung petty cash fund because it's cash, 10,000. Cash in bank as well, 40,000. Notes receivable, yung net amount, after deducting the discount, 123,000 because you have a contractual right to receive cash. Loan receivable, also you have a contractual right to receive cash. Net amount, 76,000. Held for trading securities, it's an investment in um, equity of another entity, 60,000 pesos. Investment in associate, also an investment in equity instrument of another entity, that's 40,000. Sinking fund is a, a fund set aside no, for long-term purposes, 75,000. So the total financial assets is 424,000. Again, yung mga tax items, they are not financial instruments because they do not... Um, arise from a contract but more of a legal requirement. Yung mga prepayments at saka yung mga advances, they're also not financial assets because they are they involve goods or delivery of goods or services. Now we will discuss the classification and measurement as required by PFRS 9. So initial recognition, PFRS 9 tells us that Financial assets are recognized only when the entity becomes a party to the contractual provisions of the instrument. So, yan po ang requirement. We only recognize the financial asset kapag naging party ka na to the contract. Financial assets may either be a debt instrument, ibig sabihin nag-invest ka sa mga bonds, debt instrument yon. Or it can be an equity instrument kasi nag-invest ka naman sa shares. So the other person in the contract, kung sa atin asset yon because it is an investment in debt instrument or investment in equity instrument, yung other party for debt instrument is mag-recognize siya ng liability kasi siya yung may utang. While in an investment in equity instrument, um, the other party will recognize equity. Kasi nag-issue siya ng shares. So take note that in this video, we are focusing on financial assets. The party who invested in the debt instrument or the equity instrument. So as to classification, we will divide the classification discussion into two. First, we will discuss 
the classification for debt instruments, investment in debt instruments. And number two, we will discuss the classification for equity instruments. So for um, general classification, dalawa yung classification ng financial assets. Either at amortized cost or at fair value. So ito yung broad classifications ng mga financial assets regardless kung debt or equity instrument. The basis for classification ay dalawang bagay. First, the entity's business model for managing the financial assets. Meaning ng business model is parang ano yung purpose ng company in holding that financial assets. Parang ano yung main goal niya in investing in such instruments. Pangalawa is yung contractual cash flow characteristics of the financial asset. Anong cash flow yung natatanggap ng company? So, these are the two bases for classification. So, ang first natin na i-discuss is yung classification ng mga debt instruments. For debt instruments, it can be classified into three. So, first is pwede siyang i-classify into financial asset at amortized cost or FAAC. I-recognize mo lang siya sa financial asset at amortized cost if both conditions are met. So, ano tong mga conditions ito? Dalawa yun. First, the business model is hold to collect. Meaning, yung goal ng company in holding that investment is to collect cash flows. So, yun yung goal niya. Hindi niya ibebenta yung, yung investment, but ang goal niya is to just collect cash flows from that investment. Kaya ang business model niya ay hold to collect. Second condition is that yung nako-collect niyang cash flow are solely payments of principal and interest or SPPI. So, take note that magiging financial asset lang at amortized cost ang isang investment in debt instrument kapag number one, hold to collect yung business model at number two, ang cash flows na nako-collect niya ay solely payments of principal and interest. So, that is the classification, first classification for debt instrument. Second is, you can classify it into financial asset at fair value through other comprehensive income or FAFBOCI, FABOCI, if both conditions are met. Number one condition is, yung business model ng company is hold to collect and sell, meaning, Ang goal ng company is to collect cash flows, pero if certain circumstances occur, pwede niyang ibenta yung investment. Kaya ang business model niya ay both hold to collect and sell. The second condition is yung kinokollect niyang cash flows, again, are solely payments of principal and interest. So take note from the first two classifications for debt instruments, Ano yung pagkakaiba ng financial asset at amortized cost tsaka netong pabochi? Yung pagkakaiba nilang dalawa ay yung business model. Sa FAAC, ang business model ay hold to collect, while sa pabochi, ang business model ay hold to collect and sell. The third classification for debt instruments ay financial assets at fair value through profit or loss, or FAFVPL. For this one, Pwede siyang residual, ibig sabihin it, uh, the investment does not qualify to be measured at amortized cost or pabochi. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya na-meet yung mga conditions para sa amortized cost or yung mga conditions para sa pabochi. So dahil wala na siyang mapuntahan, residually, dito mo siya ilalagay sa FAFDPL. Or another way to put it under this classification pag debt instrument ay through the fair value option. Ibig sabihin, Kahit na-meet niya yung conditions sa FA amortized cost or FABOCI, the entity chose to use this fair value option. So, pinili ng entity na i-measure siya at FA FBPL. Bakit niya pinipili yon? So, ine-elect niya tong option na to to measure the FA FBPL to avoid accounting mismatch. Anong ibig sabihin na accounting mismatch? Um, yung mga assets kasi, they are matched with liabilities. So sometimes, kapag for example, yung asset mo 
it meets the condition para i-measure siya at FAAC, amortized cost. Pero yung nakamatch na liability sa kanya ay measured at fair value. So, there is an accounting mismatch. So, para maging match, um, gagamitin natin yung fair value option para um, same yung asset at liability measured at fair value. So, take note that when you choose this option, this is an irrevocable election. Meaning, hindi mo na ma mapipili na palitan siya ulit into another classification. So, once you elected this, hindi mo na mapapalitan. So, again, Paano magiging FAFVPL ang isang debt instrument? First, residually, kasi hindi niya namimit yung first two. Or pangalawa, namimit niya yung first two, pero pinili mo pa rin gawin siyang FAFVPL by using the fair value option. So, that's the classification for debt instruments. There are three. FAAC, FABOCHI, and FAFVPL. Now, let, let us discuss how to classify equity instruments. There are only two possible classifications for equity instruments. Walang amortized cost. Why? Because when you invest in shares, wala po siyang contractual cash flow. Hindi tulad ng bonds na merong yearly interest, may payment ng principal at some due date. So sa equity, sa shares, you are expecting dividends. Pero hindi mo naman alam kailan. Wala siyang fixed na date as to when you will receive dividends. Therefore, for equity instruments, there are only two classification available. The first one is FAFVPL. And this is the more common pag equity instrument. So pag equity instrument, mas common na sa FAFVPL mo siya ilagay. At kailan yon If it is held for trading. Ibig sabihin, you invested in shares of another entity, tapos yung goal mo for investing in such shares ay para ibenta din siya in the near future. So, buy and sell ka ng mga shares of stocks because you are into trading shares of stocks. Or number two, residual. Kasi these are the ones that were not elected to be classified at Fabochi. So, pag hindi mo pinili yung isa, syempre, automatically dito siya sa FAFVPF. So, the second classification for equity instrument is FAFB OCI or FABOCHI. So, ang only time that you recognize equity instrument as FABOCHI is through irrevocable election at initial recognition for instruments that are not held for trading. For example, meron kang binili na shares of stocks of another entity. So, nag-invest ka dun. Pero hindi mo naman goal na i-trade yung shares of stocks na yon, So, it's not held for trading. So, you have the irrevocable election para i-measure siya at Fabochi. Paano pag hindi mo pinili yung option na to? So, if you did not choose this, then automatically, dun mapupunta sa FAFVPL yung iyong um, investment. So, for initial measurement, since tatlo ang ating classification, no, meron tayong financial asset at amortized cost, Financial asset at fair value through OCI at financial asset at fair value through profit or loss. Take note, pag FAAC, pwede lang to para sa mga debt instruments. The other two, pwede to debt, pwede to equity. Pero etong amortized cost for debt instruments only. How do we initially measure them? Pag yan ay FAAC or FABOCHI, that is at fair value plus transaction cost. The only difference is kapag FAFVPL, it is measured only at fair value. The transaction costs kapag FAFVPL are expense. So, as to um, a more in-depth discussion of measurement, the journal entries, etc., we will be discussing that in another video. We will have um, a separate vid video for each of these kinds of financial assets. Pero to give you an idea, this is the initial measurement. Subsequently, the three of them are measured differently. So, nasa pangalan naman, no? Financial asset at amortized cost, subsequently measured at amortized cost. If you will ask me how to do that, we will discuss that in another video. Financial asset at fair value through OCI, it is subsequently measured at fair value. Yung changes from initial to the present is a record sa OCI. FAFVPL, 
also subsequently at fair value yung changes this time i-record sa profit or loss again all of this will be more um discussed in details sa an um, separate video if you will ask me also sir how do we measure fair value um please check out the part 2 of financial instruments because we will be explaining there the measurement of fair value. So to practice, let's have a very simple example, pero yung mga mas detalyadong problems, no, we will discuss that in a separate video tutorial. For example, Benedetta Company had the following investment transactions. December 3, acquired 12,000 shares of Lunox Company. So ang ininvest niya shares. So, isipin nyo na agad, dalawa lang yung pwedeng classification pag shares yung ininvest. Either FAFB OCI or FAFB PL at 3 pesos per share. Benedetta incurred 1,800 brokerage commission. So, etong brokerage commission, eto yung transaction cost. December 31, Lunox Company's shares have a quoted price of 5 pesos per share. And January 16, Benedetta Company sold all the shares at 8 pesos per share. Benedetta incurred sale transaction costs of 4,800. So, kunwari, the investment is held for trading. So, kapag held for trading siya, of course, the classification is FAFBPL. Let us journalize the transactions. On December 3, the entry is debit FAFBPL 36,000 and credit cash 36,000. How did we arrive at 36,000? That's 12,000 shares times 3 pesos quoted price, 36. Hindi natin inad yung transaction cost na 1,800 because kapag FAFBPL, the transaction cost is expensed immediately. So the second entry is debit expense, 1,800 at credit cash, 1,800. On December 31, Ang ating fair value na ay 5 pesos per share. So, 5 pesos times 12,000, that, that's 60,000. Yung initial na amount ay 36. So, from 36,000 to 60,000, there is an increase in fair value of 24,000 pesos. So, the entry is debit FAFBPL to, to adjust the asset by 24,000. And the credit is unrealized gain. Pero profit or loss, 24,000. Now, why is there a word unrealized? Kasi ang gain na to is not something na nakatanggap tayo ng pera. It's just a gain just because nagbago yung value ng investment. Pero hindi ka naman nakakuha ng pera talaga. So that's why it's unrealized. So, so far, dahil nagdagdag ka ng 24, Ang fair value na or ang value na ng asset natin ay 60,000 na. 36 nung una tapos 24 ngayon. So 60,000 na siya. On January 16, binenta mo ang um, investment at 8 pesos per share. So the entry is debit cash, 91,200. We will explain later how did we arrive at this. Credit FAFVPL to de-recognize the asset, 60,000 because... That is the carrying amount or the value niya so far nung December 31, 60,000. At credit the difference, gain on sale, 31,000. This time, realized na to. Wala na siyang unrealized kasi nabenta mo na siya. Nakatanggap ka na talaga ng pera, 31,200. How did we arrive at 91,200? So, the cash proceeds is 8 pesos per share. That's 8, 8 pesos times 12,000, a total of? 96,000. Pero, gumastos ka ng transaction cost para sa pagbenta. So, hindi mo natanggap yung 96 kasi gumastos ka pa ng 48. Yung net proceeds lang ay 91,200. That's why it's like that. What if the investment was elected para i-measure at FAFB OCI? So, if it was elected to be measured at FAFB OCI, then... The entry on December 3 is debit Fabochi, 37,800 at credit cash, 37,800. Bakit 37,800? If you remember, the fair value is 36,000. Pero dahil Fabochi to transaction cost is capitalized. So, plus 1,800 
ang total initial measurement niya ay 37,800. On December 31, the fair value is now 60,000. Dahil 37,800 siya nung simula, the increase in fair value is 22,200. That's why the entry is debit Fabocci, 22,200. Credit and realized gain, pero this time OCI, 22,200. And on January 16, dahil Fabocci ito, i-recognize muna natin siya sa OCI. Okay, we will explain later bakit ito ginagawa no, in a separate video. Pero the entries are like this. I-update mo muna sa 91,200. So, dagdag ng 31,200. And then, you record the sale, debit cash, credit Fabocci, 91,200. And then, yung unrealized gain na nasa OCI, 31,200 tsaka 22,200 nung December 31, a total of 53,400 ay to be transferred to retained earnings. So I will explain in a later video bakit sa retained earnings siya nilalagay. So that would be all for the introduction to PFRS 9. Again, for a more in-depth discussion of each of the classification, There is a separate video tutorial for that. So for today, this is where we will end and it's time to test your knowledge. Again, if you know the answers to these questions, please comment your answer down below. Question number one. Under PFRS 9, financial assets are classified A, on the basis of the entity's business model or contractual cash flow characteristics of the financial asset. B, As financial assets subsequently measured either at fair value or at amortized cost. C. As fair value through profit or loss, loans and receivables available for sale securities or held to maturity securities. Or D. Both A and B. Question number two. On January 1, 2020, Ling Company purchased 1,000 shares of Lancelot Company for 250,000. Commission paid to broker amounted to 10,000. The equity securities were designated by management to be measured at fair value through profit or loss. On December 31, 2020, the shares are quoted at 200 pesos per share. It was estimated that transaction cost of 20 pesos per share will be incurred if the shares were sold on that date. How much is the unrealized gain or loss? On change in fair value recognized in the 2020 profit or loss. A. 70,000 loss. B. 50,000 loss. C. 40,000 loss. Or D. 60,000 gain. So again, if you know the answers to these questions, comment your answer down below. So thank you very much for reaching this point and for listening and watching this video. If you have questions, you may message me in my social media accounts and please do like, comment, share this video para ma-reach naman natin yung mga iba nating friends, classmates, and students no, na nag-aaspire maging CPA in the future. Thank you very much guys and always remember that every day is an opportunity for us to learn something new. So that would be all for today guys and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!